Well, we've talked to a few of the guys who didn't get a chance to go to Vancouver, and uh, here we are just a few days later. How have things changed for you from uh, being the Leafs' top selection to where we are now yeah, on, on a team? It's day? transpired, you know, from you know the draft to here, and it's, it's a quick transition from the flight, uh, but it's pretty, pretty exciting. I still can't believe I'm here and representing the Toronto Maple Leafs, and it's, uh, it's a very exciting time for me right now. I think as happy as your mom and dad must have been, I think Simeon's even yeah, happier to he, have you. He was so happy. I mean, uh, I felt like he was one of my family members when he was calling me. But, uh, you know, I think my family is more excited than I am. You know, for me, it's just hockey for them. It's, you know, they've seen me with, you know, my birth premature and seen where I came from. So uh, I don't remember it, obviously. And I know it's special to them, especially going to Toronto, how unique it is and how the attention's here. And, you know, just they know that this is the best place to develop to hopefully represent the Maple Leafs one day and play in the NHL. He said he was surprised that you slipped that far. Can you describe? Yeah. yeah. Can you describe the emotions as you know, name after name gets called up? Yeah. You know, it's hard not to look at the rankings and stuff. And you know, when you're ranked, you know, late first round or wherever, and um, you know, it's kind of like you're thinking you'll go in the first day, and you know, when teams show interest and then they don't pick you, you wonder what happens, but you never know. So. Uh, all I knew is just to control my emotions, and when day two came around, you know, waiting a little bit in the first round of that day, the second round there, and, and it was a little frustrating, you know, talking to my dad, like saying what's going on, like I thought I said the right things, but once uh, Toronto came up, like I told my dad, like actually two weeks before, like after the combine, I said this is a place I want to go to. I'd rather be a 53rd pick than be a, you know, late first round pick, whatever, because Toronto's the best spot out of any organization in the NHL they develop and the best city, best fans, so I'm just happy to be part of it. Did you, uh, your parents are clearly uh, quite proud of talking to them Sunday after you're drafted, where you've come from. Can you understand just your own your own rise and, and where you have come from? To get yeah, to you know, it's, next? you know, I'm, my mom's from the Philippines and my dad's from Michigan, so, if, you know, hockey's not a big thing where she's from and, you know, she had to kind of switch her culture to hockey at a young age for me and, um, you know, I'm from California and, you know, not, it's not, kind of heard of that a California kid you know goes to the OHL but you know I know a few done done it and you know it's kind of like an unbeaten path but you know I went from California to Michigan then to Toronto and a lot of traveling and um, but you know it's not me that got me here it's my family it's from everyone from my sister you know from my brothers everyone you know they sacrificed their time for me and especially my mom she went up in the apartment in Vaughn here sacrificed her time with myself and my family because we were away from them and her family from the Philippines out in California so um, she again she's a backbone of my career and um, you know I think it's kind of hard, harder for her and she it's very special to her because how much she had to do to get here and how much time she sacrificed but yourself too just having a fight since literally the moment you were born yeah you know I, obviously I don't remember it you know I was told it but I think that kind of kind of shifted me in the pair player and person I am just being versatile and being uh, you know perseverant and you know strong you know I had uh, I was premature born on 9-11-01 where the country is in havoc and um, you know I can only imagine my dad's going through you know you have a little baby that you know is you know in the NICU and you know I have to decide if you're gonna you know take him off life support or he's gonna have some disability or he's you know, gonna live so it was up to him I know he told me there were three shots and uh, they didn't work to get enough oxygen in my brain or something with my lungs and they said the fourth one this could kill him or this could make him live or you know the likelihood of it because they haven't tried it the likelihood of it happening is very slim and you know thank God it worked and uh, you know it's just a remarkable story obviously my dad feels touched by it but for me all I know is from him telling me so. you don't take anything for granted at all, do you? no no I'm just no I'm just very grateful to be here I think that's just my personality and the way my parents have treated me that you know you always have to work for what you get and um, you know again that birth story kind of forms me in the person I am you know not to, you know taking everything for granted just enjoying where I am and living in my shoes so. Uh, they said I was till American Thanksgiving. Um, <laughs> yeah, I was in there for a while, and uh, I know my dad said uh, he would come up every day to see me in the morning. And I was really small, and I uh, had tubes going into me as a NICU. And uh, I remember he went on vacation after that, and then it turns out I had pneumonia. And uh, that he said that was the most scary thing because he had to go back from Hawaii or wherever he was, and that was the life or death situation because it's harder when you're younger too. So. Um, yeah, I mean, he's told these stories. Obviously, you know, it's hard to believe, but, you know, again, he said it's shaped me in the person I am, and, um, you know, that story will always be with me, and I think that kind of defines how I play on the ice, and just, you know, you see me smiling, you see me happy to be here. I'm never in a bad mood or anything, and I think that's because that, those time, you know, I'm very grateful to be here. I'm happy to be part of my family, because who knows, maybe if he, I didn't take that shot or anything like that, I wouldn't be here right now, so. How many weeks premature were you? Uh, I think it was 28, uh, I was 
I was 28 weeks. Uh, I'm not, I know it's three born, months premature. Your mom said you were born at 28 weeks. Yeah, born at 28 weeks, three months premature. So. Why were you so convinced and sold that Toronto was the right place to be for you? <clears throat> you, know, there, you know, there are a lot of organizations I talk to throughout the year, and they're very like, hard on you. They ask you questions, and Toronto's just chill, and they... You know, they talked to my coach a lot. They talked to me during the season, and when I went to the combine, showing me the clips, you know, I felt comfortable in the room. That was one of the teams I felt comfortable with, and, you know, I think when you're comfortable with a group, they get the best out of you, and, uh, you know, they just a lot of skill, and uh, they talked to me and my agent and my coaches a lot, so I think that they show a lot of attention to me, so. I heard you told someone that you trick-or-treated at Babcock's house. Yeah, I remember I told them that. So I was, well, started off in California. Uh, obviously, <laughs> I was born there, and, he was coaching Anaheim Ducks and we're at the Ducks training facility. And I remember maybe I was talking to him or something, or uh, you know, talking to him after or before a game. I don't even know. I was way young, and then we went to Mich. I, he got a d coaching job in Detroit, and then I moved to Northville, Michigan. That's kind of where he lives. And uh, I remember trick or treating with a pile of Ducks jersey on. And I, I remember him and his wife greeting me at the door and giving me some candy. And <laughs> I would have never thought he would, you know, one day hopefully be, you know, my coach. And then I moved to Toronto and saw that he's him, you know, coaching Toronto. What so. was his reaction when you told him that? He was surprised. I mean, it's, <laughs> I don't think you can ever imagine a kid <laughs> trick and at his house is drafted by the team he's coaching. So uh, it's an amazing story. I mean, I know my story is kind of unique, but it's pretty special. Did you know it was at his house? Yeah, um, I know he lived around there, and I t kept telling my sister, because we were the only ones trick or treating really young, I said, I had a Datsu jersey on, or and you know, I was like, I gotta go to Babcock's house. I gotta go to Babcock's house. You know, I want him to see me in my jersey and tell him I played for like Little Caesars at the time. I was so excited, and I remember I was getting late, and I was like running and trying to knock on everyone's door. I'm like, Are you Babcock? No. And then, uh, and then run over to the next one. Are you Babcock? And then finally, I I got him, and uh, I was I think I asked him about Datsu, and that was my favorite player at the time. And, uh, it's just funny when you think about those things, and you know my goal one day is now, you know, for him not to give me candy, but to give me shifts. So, um, <laughs> you got to start on time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't. I think he gave me a lot of the little ones, and but uh, I didn't care. I just wanted to see him. You know, he's a famous coach, and what he's accomplished is something amazing. And hopefully, I'm going to be a part of. So. What are your goals this season in terms of where you'd like to see your game improve? To yeah, I mean, I want to take the most out of this camp. You know, have fun. With it and then rookie camp, rookie tournament, and then training camp, you know, I want to work as hard as I can and I don't want to go in there and kind of lay back, I want to compete, you know, I want to work hard this summer to compete and obviously I'm not against those NHL players and, you know, it's very hard to make a roster from there, but I'm trying to compete, I'm not going to go in there and say, oh, I'm going to go to junior after this, my mind that week is just to give the, get all I got, you know, you never know what happens, so that's my mentality and as far as the season goes, uh, you know, major junior, if I go back, you know, it's... Most likely I'll go back, uh, you know, just being a leader and, you know, just trying to help the rookies, especially guys going through the draft year. And, you know, I want to be more of a, even more reliable player than I was last year and producing. And, you know, I want to win really bad. And the past two years in Peterborough hasn't been too bright in the winning spots. So just trying to change that. What stood out from the documentary you guys watched last night? What was that? What stood out watching that documentary last night? It's such a great uh, Just, you know, their mentality, you know, they... Uh, you know, think above others, and they always have something that motivates them, something, you know, maybe someone passed them up on a tryout, or, I don't know, Michael Jordan, or, you know, they thought Gretzky was too slow, and they thought uh, Rice was, you know, not a fast sprinter, but, you know, it's all, it's all, you know, what you do on the field or on the ice, so uh, it's what you do from there, and you got other skills that separate you. It's not just, you know, if you're as fast as a guy, so. What do you like to do to get away from the game of hockey? Just to be around my family, I mean, especially before the draft, to help me take away my emotions going to the draft mentally. And, um, you know, I got two black labs out in California, and, um, you know, I, lo <laughs> I love them so much. I bring them everywhere with me, uh, you know, in the pool when I'm not supposed to and <laughs> everywhere. And uh, it's funny, <laughs> back home there's a bear that always rocks around, so maybe hang out with him sometimes. <laughs> so Wait, there's a, there's a, a yeah, is there a bear? Maybe I'll show you a picture after this. Uh, in California, we live, like, near the hill, okay. and there's, a, like, cubs and bears that come like they're like, I remember I had a teammate Supreme who was on Hamilton, and it was probably like five foot. I was five feet away from a bear when I was filling up like the car or something like that. And yeah. Yeah, it was scary, but you know, it's all you kind of want to pet it, but it's too scary. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah. So.